So I'm in Paradise Square and I'm going to go from Paradise Square up to the university through all the new flats that's been built. But this gives you an idea of Paradise Square. This was the solicitor's quarters but like there there was a pub and that shut down and lots of these solicitors are moving out and I've just talked to a guy and it, there you can see one that's uh, for let. I've just spoke to a guy and he says that this area is owned by the Earl of Shrewsbury Trust, richest man in England at one bit. So basically a lot of these solicitors are moving out. It's been turned back into housing and that's what it originally was around here. It was housing for posh people but it's ended up being individual flats now rather than houses. This used to be a meeting place in Sheffield for people. So I'm going to now head towards the university quarter. And I'm going to pass Griffin House and Jubilee House and Courtwood House where Midland Bank HSBC used to be and point those out. And you can see that large building is Griffin House. Well, I knew it was Griffin House. Originally Midland Bank in the 70s, then HSBC in the 90s when they took Midland over. I'll turn around and show you. Three Tons pub, traditional Sheffield pub. Would have been full of bankers and solicitors at lunchtime in the past, but now Griffin House has gone with its 2,000 staff. I'm sure it's depleted its clientele. I'm just going to show you the other side of the three tons. It's on a corner. Really nice pub inside. I've only been in once, but certainly nice. Traditional Sheffield pub. Now here is Courtwood House. And that was another Midland Bank HSBC building. They've moved down to the retail quarter now. And I can assure you that I wouldn't say there's a quarter of the people housed in these buildings now to what they were. I mean, if you look at that, that's Griffin House, the frontage, 13 storeys, five blocks. I think I've just shown you Courtwood House. I'm just going to pop down and show you when I started at Midland in 85 and that was in Julie House. But HSBC Midland Bank had loads of offices all over Sheffield and it's all been concised into the Grosvenor House which I don't believe it's a quarter of the size of what we used to have. We also had Oil Street as well and the Oil Street was always packed out with people. I think Griffin House alone held about 2,000 people and I can't really see them getting 500 in Grosvenor House. So I'm just going to show you Jubilee House where I started in 85. Real pleasure to work in there. You can see it there. That's Jubilee House. When you went in through that reception door it's called Holman House now. It was really plush. Then we had a room with about eight people in it with his own kitchen facilities, really nice. But after a year being in there, I moved into Griffin House, which was open plan. And not quite the same. Still a lot better than it was before I left, but that say that's Jubilee House. And if I just pop across here, that's the old West Bar Police Station, open in the 60s. By Sheffield Constabulary, not South Yorkshire. My granddad served there as a Chief Inspector. And I'm just going to show you the other side of Griffin House. 
going up Tenter Street. If I just zoom in, you can see the size of Griffin. So that's the first block, which is 13. And then there's two further blocks behind it, which is seven storeys high. And then even behind that, there's a third and fourth block. But all the way up Tenter Street now, if I zoom right in, these are all new flats or whatever being built probably to do with the university and then all these are new buildings that have appeared since 2000 because this was all just car parking and footprint tools and things like that gonna cross the road now because it's quite busy around there and go up Scotland Street which is down the side of West Bar Police Station I wonder if that's anything to do with Scotland Yard Seems a bit strange. It's Scotland Street down the side of the old West Bar Police Station. And this is the other side. So this is the old West Bar Police Station, the other side of it. I know my granddad had a book from when it was when it was first opened, detailing what was in the building because it was quite state of the art in those days. It's now. Uh, the Hampton by Hilton. And this Scotland Street area was all the old industrial area. But you can see, look at the size of these buildings. And from this area onwards, they built lots of uh, university buildings. Browsing residents there. Imagine students at the moment paying nine grand a year to just be educated. Well, I'm not so sure about educated because most of them are just sat at terminals in the rooms at the moment in lockdown. And how much are they paying a year for the rooms which the universities or somebody else will be earning money out of? For this area, when I was at Midland Bank, in 2000 was still very industrial. I think it was also of the red light district as well. Crow in there. Another good old fashioned Sheffield pub. I'm just gonna turn back a bit and just show you the size of this building. Like I say, none of this was around when I was back there in 2000, this is all new. When I just spoke to a guy, he says that the Earl of Shrewsbury's Trust owns the Paradise Square area. So we still have these title families indirectly owning a lot of the wealth. You can see these were old, old industrial tool makers and various things. I was told it wasn't going to rain today, according to the weather report, or for just for an hour, about three o'clock. But it was raining as soon as I got into Sheffield today. You can see this area being really ripe for redevelopment. They're going to get every penny they can get out of it. This is the Methodist Connection Chapel. But it's significantly changed in this area since I worked here 20 years ago. Used to be able to park for free on the streets. I'm not sure what, what you can do nowadays. Yeah, it's all machine. They're all making money out of it. We're already paying road tax. And then they're making more money out of us again. As you can see, it's very, very, or was very industrial. But you can see all these new flats now appearing here. How much they charge people here, I don't know, for a flat. Yeah, I can see, can see one on that building there, it's quite clear that's Unite Students.
but I'm going to go to the left hand side of this because we're moving back down there's still a bit of industry around here and I want to really go more on the student area up to the UNA there was the old Queen's Hotel totally derelict to Ward's pub and Robert Neil and Company Sheffield famous old quality Sheffield companies as you can see when I was a banker I used to park my street car around here on the streets for free and would rub shoulders with people who were working in industry well it's not quite like that now it seems more like a student area I'm going a little bit away from Griffin House at the moment but like I said I'm going to start backtracking now to try and show you these new flats. If you go down there, that'll take you down to Peniston Road, the main, main road into Hillsborough. We're coming back up now to where all these new flats are that I've been on about. In fact, I can see some here. Yeah. See across there. More student flats, Unite Students, just show you that. Certainly making the money out of students. Low quality education, Marxist. Like I say, they're not even sat in rooms now. Uh, we've got sort of a bit of a Chinese quarter around here, you can see. But I think there's students. interesting to know who's making all the money out of this whether it's the university or other private individuals oh. I don't know what this police building is here because this is new, it wasn't a police building when I worked round here. See more flats, they look like they've been here for years but they haven't, these are all new. They're absolutely everywhere. Zoom in there. More up here. I think I'm going to walk up here. See up there. Brass Founders, but that's the Unite building again. All this area we used to park as cars on it were all industrial. It's all now student area. It's a bit dicey on here in the winter with the ice. Come skidding down these hills before. In fact, I think I can still park here for free. I'll have to have a look at this next time rather than paying. So there is still some free parking here, but 
There won't be enough for us when we were at Griffin House. So we're on Brocker Street here. This area has changed quite drastically. There were really smaller industrial units. Now there's big flats appearing everywhere. Unite students again. It's everywhere. Just can't believe it, it just looks nothing like when I worked here. Just want to give you an idea. You can see right at the bottom, it's Griffin House again on Tenta Street. If I can go in really low, that high there. And then either side of Griffin House is all these, sorry, all the side of this street are all these flats. Same down there as well. If I zoom right in, and this was footprint tools around here. It's just loads of flats. I can't believe the change in a 20 year period. It's unrecognizable. You can see it's revenue per head per student and I think there's 30,000 students at Sheffield University and another 30 at the Hallam University. They just basically packed as many student buildings in here as possible. I didn't realise it was as bad as this till I've actually walked up. Across from Griffin House we used to park on dead land. I think there was a charge for it for car parking and now it's massive high rise buildings. Another new nights built new night students building here. St Vincent's Church when I was at Midland you used to be able to park on a car park there like an annual fee for parking on that churches have been the worst for selling the souls they don't practice what they preach I don't know how much the actual Church of England have got in a fund or it runs into billions that's on top of all the land they own around the country. And these flats are absolutely everywhere, Unite students. And all down here as well. I say this was small industrial units when I worked here and only 20 years ago. Massive high rise flats now. And I'd say the majority are for students. You can see it's just everywhere. So I'm going to go back up more towards the uni again. But it must be giving people an idea just how much money these people are making out of students.
somebody's making out of the students but it's not the high quality jobs we used to have in Sheffield the developments seem to get worse the further you get up to Chef, uh, up to the university now there were some older flats around here and they are still here I'll show you those in a minute but absolutely all these modern looking flats have appeared here since 2000 We could park on any of these side streets. There were no single lines around here, no double lines. More flaps there. Police there, I'd love to know what that Hayes house is. To dig up on that one. Now I think there was a pup around here, I forgot its name. One of these two was a pub, I think in the past were into anymore. Chinese food places This was all very rough industrial area at one bit To give us somebody an idea who's worked around here in the past. Now it's changed from industrial to student accommodation. Now we're coming up to old flats that have been here for a long time. Sorry if I'm panting, but it's quite a drag up these hills. See these are all industrial buildings. Probably could still be industrial, I don't know. And these are the original flats that used to be here when I used to park around here. Never got my car broken into. Bit rough I think this area, but well it was. But like I said, they never touched us cars. See more flats over there. Just everywhere. Seeing how many they can pack in. Such a small area. We are very close to the uni now. That strange building up there is some uni building. These old flats have been here for a long time. More new flats.
sort of behind Broad Lane at the moment. Broad Lane runs up to Tenter or down to Tenter Street. More new flats just there in grey. Everywhere you look, everywhere there's been a bit of spare land. They built flats. it all straight that it's a beautiful church here which is a psychology department now for the university We're sort of at the top end of traffic around the street again on this one. Broad Lane, sorry, couldn't remember for the minute. But same again, you can see it's a uni another university thing, there's a sign. University of Sheffield. It's all the way from down there. And this is like the university area. That's uh University of Sheffield, Sir Frederick Maplin building. It's like they've took over Sheffield. I think this is St George's Church, I think, or it was. So they turned it into a psychology department. It's no good having education if there's no jobs. See the church, absolutely beautiful building. Then that university building there. Not sure if I like that or not. Going back down to more student accommodation. I know when I've driven up here in the past during the day I've seen thousands of students walking down. But that was from the other end when they all used to live up the other up, up the other end towards the A57. This is the A57 at the moment. Coming up past here. And they're all university buildings everywhere. Or flats, see the insignias on the building. Just everywhere, this is all new, this. It's not been here for 20 years. Another massive flat complex, all new again. 
looks over, it's not, that's new. Coming up to a main roundabout now on the ring road. I've got to somehow cross this lot. I think with the university being on here they've had a sort of subway system to get you from one side to the other. Now all these flats are the old ones. Private, well not private but they don't belong to the uni these ones. They've all been recladded and I think this is what they've had the issue with in London with a flat setting on fire with the cladding on them. So all these these like one, two, three, the original flats people lived in. To dash across that road. Super tram runs under here. This takes you back down to Peniston Road. Have to really be careful around here because I fly down here. See all the new buildings. I always wonder what they were when I was driving past them. But they've all got Sheffield University signs on them if I pull right in. Only guessing that's another university building. These are the old flats that's been here since the 60s, recladded. These people would have been brought out as what they considered as slum housing. Well, I'm not too sure. Some of the, I think I'd have rather been in some of the slum housing than these flats. See another one of these old flats, like I say. I think this is a concern they have over the cladding with Grenfell. I'm coming up to what I think is the, old, is the Art Tower, which at one bit was one of the biggest buildings in Sheffield. University Art Tower. Massive. But I'm going to go a bit closer to this one, I think it's well worth a look. see so that's like I say I'm gonna guess as a guess so that's the University Tower Art Tower and then got some more what looks like flats probably for the University again they didn't get where they were without making money never mind the qualifications they're giving people at the end of the day I don't think they're worth the paper they're written on anymore I think when I was at school you were lucky if the top 5% went to uni. So degrees in that day and age were actually worth something. But nowadays I've seen that it's called GCSE, so it's basically the O levels and CSEs put into one exam. And they're all taking the same exam. So basically, if you're getting an A, you've probably been lucky to get a C when I was at school.
Well, I'm going up to where the original university was before it just sprawled everywhere. Some of these buildings were uni, but nothing like this. It's horrendous. I really want to show you the original Sheffield University building, which is what I like. It looks like an old castle. Just going to have to stick the umbrella up because it's starting to rain now. The umbrella's up anyway, so there's the University Arms. I'm assuming that don't belong to the university, or could do, since we own everything else around here. You've got to think, where's that money come from? A lot of that money's coming from you and me through taxes, but then they're running as independent companies, and I don't think that's right. I mean, it's horrendous around here, I mean, it's just like a concrete jungle. See, it's definitely a university building because there's that same university sign on the side of it. There's university building, Sheffield building again, Alfred Denny building. My favourite place is the actual original Sheffield University, the character, and there's the Art Tower from a different angle, zoom right in, actually using the 350 digital zoom at the moment, it says the quality isn't as good on that as optical but probably would be if I could hold it steady but this is all university buildings all on this side as well all across here there's students union where the Marxist brainwashing goes off. On top of the park, probably most of the people educating them nowadays. That's, that's like massive student unions building. Some beautiful parks up this side of Sheffield, but I don't think I'll be going in there today. I'll pop up another day when the weather's nicer and do another video, but it's starting to blow again a bit at the moment and rain. So there's something here, a boundary post. Boundary post, Nether Allen, Sheffield Township. Coming up to where the Sheffield Children's Hospital is. You carry on up, you get up to Western Park. There's about two or three parks in that area. All the students are wearing masks. Well, some famous doctor who knows what he's talking about, a virologist said wearing masks is nothing more than virtue signalling because it's actually providing no actual function. Let's see if we can cross the road and show you the main university building. So 
old way the original Sheffield Uni was it's called the Firth Court after one of the famous steel workers Firth Steels whether he put some money into it or not it's my favourite part of the Uni the rest of it nothing more than a common Creek jungle but I just want to show people what it's like I'm just going to go a little bit further and then call it a day but I really want to show people the amount of student flats that's gone up Reve revenue generation it's another picture of the UNA problem is I think I've ended up with rain on the lens So here's the park, there's two or three parks around here, beautiful they are as well. I think the university buildings and flats may carry on from here, probably the original ones. I'll go a little bit further and see what I can find up here. There's a big art gallery up here. That's not to do with the uni, that's part of the park. Oh, this is all all this lot from the old building. All up here is Sheffield Children's Hospital. And I'm pretty sure the university interests carry on past here. But that's the main area of the Firth Park. Firth building, sorry. This is Western Park. See the museum in the back. Big museum, I think that's free to go in. They ask for a donation. You can see it's definitely in student quarter. As you notice, all the students have got masks on. I'll repeat that, it's virtue signalling wearing a mask. It won't protect you from a virus. It's more liable to do you harm than good. I've done some studies now in Denmark. They've said that there's absolutely no difference between wearing a mask and not. My consideration is it's reducing your oxygen intake. And you're also breathing CO2 back in. So I think in the long run you'll actually find mask wearers are more liable to end up with coronaviruses. It's the damage in their actual immune system. There's some more big devices up here, there's some what looks like pile drivers and I rise flat cranes again I don't know what all this lot is, I reckon this is more flats but university with some billboards and we'll have a quick look it was a nice area to Sheffield but I think they've ruined it with the number of large buildings. So the A57 out of Sheffield, taking you up to the Peak District. It was really leafy suburbs up one bit. You can 
see the billboards you've probably got as much idea about what this is something to do with the university as you can see that's the main university building the first building this is massive this stop here but I'm sure the university interests go much further than this but that's another massive development from the uni there some sort of sports facilities or something like that I'll leave it then anyway so I hope you enjoyed the tour from Paradise Square up to the university showing you the number of university flats there are and what massive income they're making from the flats on top of the nine grand a year university fees or is it nine grand for the university degree somebody will probably correct me on that so anyway i'll speak to you again later bye